Boitinaire deformity. Boitinaire deformity is characterized by PIP flexion and DIP extension. It's caused by a rupture of the extensor tendon center slab. So an injury to the extensor tendon or the central slab will prevent the finger from active extension. The boutonniere deformity is really a zone 3 extensor tendon injury. And you can see here the zones of the extensor tendon injuries. Here the PIP joint. Here the extensor tendon, here the central slip inserted into the base of the middle pharynx at the PIP joint, and here are the lateral bands. They are connected together by the triangular ligament, and the extensor tendon is inserted into the base of the distal pharynx. The triangular ligament connects the two lateral bands and it will prevent its volar subluxation. Here you can see the sagittal band and the transverse retinacular ligament and the oblique retinacular ligament. Here is a side view showing the arrangement of the tendons and the ligaments. What causes boitinaire deformity? The answer is injury to the central slab of the extensor tendon. What are the differences between boitinaire deformity and other deformities of the finger? The mallet finger and the swan neck deformity. In the mallet finger, there will be a rupture or avulsion of the terminal extensor tendon, and the patient will not be able to actively extend the DIP joint. And the treatment, usually conservative treatment, in a splint, you immobilize the DIP joint in extension and you keep the PIP joint free and you keep it moving. Surgery is reserved if there is subluxation of the DIP joint or if the fragment is more than 50% and surgery is done by pinning. How about the swan neck deformity? In a swan neck deformity, you will have hyperextension of the PIP joint and flexion of the DIP joint. What are the causes of the swan neck deformity? A mallet finger at the DIP, a volar plate laxity or injury at the PIP, or subluxation of the tendon at the MP joint. Boitinaire deformity is an extensor tendon injury. There are three components. A center slip rupture, a triangular ligament attenuation. Attenuation of the triangular ligament causes the lumbricals to act as flexors of the PIP joint. These lumbricals will also extend the DIP joint. And lateral band volar subluxation. What are the stages to boitinaire deformity? An injury to the center slab will lead to lack of extension of the PIP joint. The triangular ligament and lateral band get separated and there will be volar migration of the lateral bands and that will cause flexion force on the PIP joint and extension force on the DIP joint. There will be retinacular ligament contracture and PIP and DIP capsular contracture. Clinical examination. The extensor tendon of the finger splits into lateral bands. The lateral bands come together and insert into the base of the distal pharynx. The center slip insert into the base of the middle pharynx. 
If the center slip becomes ruptured, the lateral bands will slip down to a volar position. Allison's test is used to determine a possible tear of the central slip before the deformity is evident. The patient bends the PIP joint 90 degrees over the edge of a table. The patient is then asked to extend the finger against resistance of the examiner. If the central slip is intact, the examiner will be able to feel the tension of the finger being extended. With a ruptured central slip, the examiner will not feel tension and the patient will be unable to extend the PIP joint. If there is a central slip injury, the patient will have weak PIP extension and the DIP joint will go into rigid extension as the patient attempts to extend the finger. What is the treatment in this situation? It will be extension splinting of the PIP joint. If you don't have central slip injury, then the patient will have PIP extension and the DIP will be floppy because the lateral bands are not activated. Treatment. Acute botanier deformity, you will do a static splint of the PIP joint for approximately six weeks. You will do it for acute injuries that are closed and are less than 46 weeks. And you will allow active DIP extension and flexion in the splint in order to avoid contracture of the oblique retinacular ligament. You may want to add more splinting part-time or at night for about 46 weeks. Acute open repair of botanier. Open injury requires surgical repair. Chronic botanier more than two months after injury. Treatment is surgery. You do reconstruction of the extensor mechanism. Use splint before surgical release. Full passive range of motion of the PIP and DIP is needed before surgery. Prognosis. Prognosis is bad if the patient is more than 45 years of age, if there is an associated fracture, if there is fixed PIP contracture, or if there is a prior surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.